you so much for being here today. Ah, can you say to somebody just beside you to say congratulations for being here today? Hallelujah. Because God is about to do a new thing in your life. Say to somebody, God is about to do a new thing in your life. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brethren, it's just by divine grace that uh, somebody like me can stand before you who is not qualified for anything. But God has seen me by grace to be qualified today. And please, as a minister today, please don't look at me. Just look unto God, the bottom and finish of our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's always a time in the life of a man and a woman that God wants to do a new thing. Hallelujah. My prayer this afternoon is that we will see God this afternoon. We will see God this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the awesome name of Jesus. As we surrender all to him, he will do what only him alone can do in our life, in our situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't mind me, I was just humbled. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we need it once in a while. Hallelujah. Before our daddy in heaven. Amen. I'm going to ask somebody to read for us. For someone. Chapter 1. And we are reading from um, 1 to 11. The, book, the first book of Samuel, chapter 1, and we are reading from uh, verse 1 to 11. To Sarubi, if you can help, thank you. Now there was a certain man of Ramathame Zophi, of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also the son, the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion. For he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely mm -hmm. to make her miserable because mm. the Lord had closed her womb. Mm. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord mm -hmm. that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Okay. Verse 8. Yep. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you eat? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart good? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed to the Lord, and wept in anguish. Mm. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant, and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. I just want to appreciate uh, the set man in the house. Thank you, Pastor. For giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, for the I, I just want to thank you for, for all that you have been doing and uh, for what you do. Hallelujah. I pray that God will continually use all of us in, the, in this place in the name of Jesus. The title of my um, short message this afternoon, I call it short. I hope it's going to be short. It's three gas. to <laughs> an unusual breakthrough. Three gas to an unusual Breakthrough. Hallelujah. Pastor 
started well last week, and we we learned we learned how important sacrifice is. That there are things that you can do to actually make God to say, "Hold on, there, there's something going on. I need to attend." And that's by means of sacrifice that we do. Hallelujah. We can see in the story that we've just been read out to us that uh, there was a woman there who God has shot her womb and who has a competitor in the house, Penina, who always, you know, tease her and make her feel useless. I don't know, is there anything in your life that making you each time feel worthless. My prayer this morning or this afternoon is that God will put an end to it in the name of Jesus. As God did for Hannah, God will put an end to such things in the name of Jesus. Right from the socks, in the mighty name of Jesus. Anna was full of sadness. She was unsure what to do. You know, that was not our first time of going to Shiloh. She's been going to Shilo. The Bible says she's been going to Shilo yearly, every year. I don't know. Some of us are here, and we've been praying. And it looks at times as if we are not praying. I have a word for somebody today. Because God is going to stand up on your behalf this year in the name of Jesus. Ah, that source of trouble, of challenges, God will put an end to it today in the name of Jesus. So she, she was left with nothing to do than to go to God again in Shiloh. Some of us would have run away. I know people, when people go through one or two or the other, we say, can I just run away? I don't want to be here anymore. But if face on to it, head on, and knowing that God is the only way, Brethren, as many of us that believe that God is our only way, and my prayer this afternoon with you in agreement is that it will work for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But I'm going somewhere. But she, 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 she discovered that there's something that she, she has been doing year in, year out. All of a sudden, she had a brainwave and said, I have to do something drastic, mental, because she was desperate. Brethren, how desperate are you for your breakthrough? She was so desperate. And what did she do? She pulled one of the trigger. Like Pastor said last week, Pastor said, that king offered his only son that was to be in his stead Offer that son to God. <laughs> and immediately, the battle was over. Because God sees that as indignation. I said, no, nope, that's the end of it. This is too much. Nobody can do that. The only person that, can do, that did that before was God Almighty himself. When he gave us his only begotten son. Hallelujah. So he, she had a brainwave. I said, hold on a minute. I've been coming here every year. There's something I don't do. And as she knelt down, Holy Spirit was communicating with her. And she made up her mind. You know, we call this year a year of breakthrough. But, you know, somebody can have <laughs> an unusual breakthrough this year. And it depends on the way you want it. How bad do you want it? I went to pastor this year. I said, uh, I may not have. Maybe that's why I cried this morning. And I said, but this is what I want to do this year. So the devil can jump about as he likes. He cannot win. Amen. So she took a vow. 
she decided, no, I'm going to do something drastic and something dramatic. I'm going to take a vow. And wow. So what can I give to God? I don't know somebody here this afternoon. You're thinking, God, I want absolutely 360% change in my situation this year. Brethren, it is possible. Because the Bible, why? Because the Bible tells us that, you know, we serve a God whom to whom all things are what? Possible. The Bible says, with God, all things are what? Hallelujah. Tell somebody it is possible. So she took a drastic step. And she said, hold on a minute. I'm going to vow to God. I've never done this before. For the last 15 years or so, I've been coming here, or 20 years, but I'm going to do this one. I don't know why I'm challenging somebody this year in this place. But God wants to elevate people. There are still many positions at the top. You are not there yet. I don't know where you think you are. But God has a bigger plan for you. Bigger space up there for you. So one of the triggers you could pull, probably, as a way of encouragement, is to make a vow to show God how desperate you are. You know, when pastor was saying it last week, I was just thinking, that's amazing. It was a bad thing that he did, but God still stopped. Hallelujah. I'm praying for somebody here. The universe will stop for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will say, hold on, what? Stop. Let me attend to this, my son or my daughter. That will be your portion today in the mighty name of Jesus. I said that will be your portion today in the name of Jesus. So, she decided to, to take a vow. Can I just say, <laughs> because I'm legal and I really want to correct myself. If you are not led, please do not do it. But for as many that are led, <laughs> you can do it. Hallelujah. And this year, we know we celebrate with us at the end of the year, because myself included, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, one way, one trigger for unusual breakthrough is to take a vow before God. This woman did it, and the rest was history. That same year that God promised, God delivered. Hallelujah. He had a son. You know, not just a son. You know, he, you know, when people say children, children, you know, garage boys are children as well of somebody, isn't it? But presidents are a child of somebody as well, isn't it? They are a child of somebody. Scientists, they are a child of somebody. Samuel was a son of a difference. Hallelujah. So, it doesn't matter how long you have been waiting. As much as you are ready to give what it takes. Ah, that reminds me. Nothing goes for nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing goes for what? You give nothing, I'm sorry to tell you, you get nothing in return. The Bible said give. Jesus said give. And it shall be given to you. So, which means if it doesn't, if you don't give, it will not be what? I'm not the one saying it to it's the Bible. It will not be given to you. So I'm challenging somebody under the sound of my voice this afternoon that one of the triggers you could pull for that exceeding breakthrough is through vow. And as you do this, as men that do, agree to do this, God will open heavens on you in the name of Jesus. Without wasting our time, let's look at the second trigger. I, type, I call it praise. Praise. That's not money now. That's not human being now. Just praise. And what is praise? What is praise to God? <clears throat> I said, I said, there's no magic like praise to God. 
Hallelujah. That's no magic like it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, when I was thinking of, about praise, I was looking at Second Chronicles. And I was looking at the story of, which we know, Jehoshaphat. You know, was surrounded by so many enemies. Three kings and more gathered together to finish a nation, Judah. But we can see that praise is so powerful. And I was saying to somebody a while ago, just uh, two weeks or a week ago, and I said, brethren, it is good to fast. It's equally good to pray. Mm, pray without season. It's good. But there's a difference, brethren. There's always a difference. Because the Bible says something. Say, God, what? Inhabit the what? Of his people. Hallelujah. God inhabits. Our God that we serve, he inhabits the place of his people. Amen. God is not a man that will lie. God does not eat your money. We use it for the glory of God. God does not need anything from you. Only thing that God is asking for is worship. Praise. And we can see in that um, 2 Chronicles 20, verse, when, when, we, when, we, when we look at it, we can look at it from 16 to 17. Hallelujah. The, 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 when, when, when the man of God asked for the prophet and he was told what to do, he said, Tomor tomorrow, go down. That is God speaking. Hallelujah. You know, I said to somebody, I said, when we pray, God sent angel. Hallelujah. When we fast, angel comes. Hallelujah. To our head. But when we praise, God moves. Hallelujah. And we know for sure that when God moves in situation, it's all changed. Am I right? It's always all changed when God moves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise is another thing, another trigger. You know, what is praise? I remember David. David, when he was down, we know when, when, when you know, the enemy took all the, all the family away and he came back and he started crying and he didn't know what to do. He was in the middle of trouble, not knowing what to do. But what happened there? What happened? All of a sudden, he remembered praise. What is praise? That's reflection of God's glory. Basically, it's what God has done for you before. When you remember it, and you go before God to say, I'm, I'm thankful, I'm grateful. You, are, you that have done this, you are awesome. You are mighty. That's what, that's what some of the things that David did. And the story of David changed. As he began to remember what God has done, you remember, he told, he, he remember the time that he told the lions, the bears? He remember those ones. Hallelujah. And when he remember those, those things, he, he began to give glory to God. He was going to be stoned to death. But as he began to thank God, the strength began to come. Because God began to say, you, you are not going down yet, you are coming up. And that's what praise can do. I want to challenge somebody under the sound of my voice this afternoon. That like God fought for Judah, God will fight for you in the name of Jesus. As you praise God, and as you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher, it will not disappoint me and yourself in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why 
why is it good to praise? Like I was saying, praise is a, is a very good trigger. You know, when thing comes to us, first thing that thing wants to do is to suck out our praise, to make sure smile is taken over our face. Ah, I don't know what is threatening you. I don't know what that thing is. I'm less concerned. But what I know is this, that as you begin to praise God, things will begin to move for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said things will begin to move for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If you look at 2 Corinthians 20, if you look at verse, verse 28, you know, it told us when they came there and what, what happened. And this is what I'm saying to you. It wasn't Jehoshaphat army fighting. Mm -mm. No. It was God in place. It was God's battle. May God fight your battle this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I said, may the Lord God Almighty fight your battle this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can see, you know, that, that story that I said, 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 37, it talks of when, when David realized, he recalled God's goodness. How often, brethren, do you recall God's goodness to you? But most of the time, what we remember is, oh, I haven't got this. Uh, there's no way there. I've been turned out at an interview. Uh, yeah, no. You know what? Uh, I don't know. I can't make that target for that money anymore. Oh. You know, a few days ago, I was washing from home. As uh, the barrier of one of uh, our friends in London was going on. I think it's good to be invited to a burial ceremony. And I look at the guy, when they put the picture there, so handsome, only 50, busy working for God, doing everything that he could do. And it just dawned on me that at times, we are thinking we have not arrived. Just because we have this breath. Can you imagine? If God could take the breath away, what happens? One will be gone, completely gone. But we don't appreciate the gift of life at times. That, Daddy, I'm still here. Many that went beyond, it's not their doings. It's not their doings at all. They don't want to go. But for some, time was up. God needed them. But what we battle ourselves with, oh, I've not got the, that admission. I've not got that money. Uh, I've not bought that car. I've not got that house. Oh. What does the Bible say? What is it for that man that gained the whole world and lose his life? Absolutely a loser. Complete loser. What are you chasing? What is chasing you? The little that God has given you. How often do you dance before God to say, I'm grateful? few days ago, I had an experience. I was just going to pray as usual. And I don't know. Something just happened. And I found myself crying for a few hours. Just saying, God, I'm grateful. God, I'm grateful. God, I'm grateful. How grateful are you? That's food for thought. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6, 1 to 4. Hmm. Praising God. Hmm. Hallelujah. Angels shout, praising God all the time. Angels, if angels can praise God all the time. And what does the Bible say? God sits in, in the middle of that shout. And they are shouting what? Holy, holy, holy. Just hold on a minute. In a week, when did you find time to actually dance before God on your own without drums? To say, God, I appreciate you. And look at us. What an ungrateful person people we are. What we're asking for is another breakthrough. Where is the praise to God? 
Where is the tanks? Where is the place of tanks? I pray that this word will meet faith in you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. That from now on, you will know it's not about give me, give me. It's about what you want to give back in return. Nothing goes for nothing. That me and you could be saved, Jesus Christ was what? Crucified. You think it's easy? Uh, then, 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 lie down. Let somebody put their leg on you. Not, not navel, just their leg. And see how you feel. Attitude of praise is a trigger to an unusual breakthrough. Trigger to an unusual breakthrough. Psalm 22, verse 3. He said, God inhabits the praises of his people. When you are praying, you are praying, you are communicating with God. Okay, ask God anything. But when you are praising, you are thanking God. To say, even if you don't do anything at all, this that you have done, I'm grateful. Daddy, I just want to tell you I'm grateful. All I want to say is I'm grateful. Hallelujah. It is indeed good to praise the Lord. You know what? I love the way <clears throat> Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3, put it. When Jesus was appointed, what, what does he say? He was appointed to do what? To do good. Anybody there? Ruby, can you just read that for us? Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yep. Because the Lord has anointed me to yep. preach good tidings to the poor. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, yep. to proclaim liberty to the captives, yep. and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, hmm. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, Hallelujah. the oil of joy for mourning, Amen. the garment of praises for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the Hallelujah. planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Hallelujah. That Lord may be what? That Lord may be what? That's even for Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you want to be, whatever you will ever be, is not beyond God. God knows about it and is the only one that will deliver it. We have seen, are we not? Skills fail people. In Nigeria, they call it over Sabi. And guess what? They leave somebody that is not that skillful and put that person in place. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. It's time for us to think as a church. What about uh, Matthew 21, verse 16 says, said, God has ordained what? Praise through the mouth of what? A babe. Praise is a trigger to an unusual breakthrough. Not just breakthrough, you are going to have an exceedingly great breakthrough this year in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I, I, you, you know, when you look at the story of the, of the lepers, of the ten lepers, in Luke 17, and looking at it from 12 to 18, only one came back to say thank you. And guess what? He got the permanent blessing. Some of the things we are enjoying, I used to say it in the Southeast, I'll say it here. It's like a blessing out of the bottle. It's not in the bottle. It's out of the bottle. It's only when God sees it that you begin to enjoy the one inside the bottle. So I'm challenging somebody and encouraging somebody here under the sound of my voice this afternoon that God is a maker of everything. He's a maker of everything. Hallelujah. No wonder. David says something. In, in Psalm 34, verse 1 to 3. 
He said, I will praise the Lord at what? All times. And it's what? We always be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Ten lepers were healed. Only one came back to say thank you. And I, I tell you, that one received the blessing from the Father. It's made for life. Brethren, what we need at times is a, is a blessing from God, not from angels. And we are made. May God give us the attitude of praise in the mighty name of Jesus. That this year, we always have cause to praise God. The devil is a liar. You know, what he's trying to do at, at all times, you know, and, and he's succeeding. Because at times we are not where we are supposed to be with God. It takes joy away from people and puts sorrow. Ah, may that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I said, may that not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love this. Psalm 51. Verse 15. He said, O oh Lord, open down my lips, and my mouth shall show forth the praise. Shall we stand? We are going to pray. Shall we stand? Shall we stand? Oh, please. You are going to say, Father, from now on, open my mouth, down my lips. Let my mouth show forth the praise. Somebody want to turn that to prayer very quickly. Father, open down my lips. Let my mouth, everything in me, show forth that praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open down my mouth. Daddy, my mouth cannot be shut. You cannot be in control of my life and my mouth will be shut. It's impossible. I need to praise you. Whatever it is that's limiting me from opening my mouth, Daddy, break it loose today. In the name of Jesus. Open my mouth, oh Lord. And let my mouth show forth your praise. In the name of Jesus. Challenges cannot hold me bound. You, God, you must open my mouth. My mouth must be open. In the name of Jesus. This year, I must have what to say. Pass, 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 ah, Lord, I must not lack words of wisdom, of destiny this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open down my mouth. And my mouth shall show forth the praise. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Can you have your seat? Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You know, we are going through an unusual time. An unusual time needs an unusual dose. Hallelujah. For us to experience an unusual breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three. I said giving faithful and sincere service to God. Giving faithful and sincere service to God. And there's a story. I want to quickly run. I so much enjoyed that story that I love sharing it. You know, we talk about Levites, the Levites, the Levites. If we go to, is it 49? Uh, Genesis 49, I think it's 1 to 3. There, you see that the Levites were caused by their father. Anyway, I know for the theology in the house, if you ask them the father of uh, the Lev Levi, they know it. And some of us know them. Who's the father of the Levi? Anybody? It's Jacob. Ah, ah, theologians are in the house. But what happened there was, in, in, if, you, if you look at it, if you go to, no, to, to, to 30, hold on a minute. I'll just share it, just make sure I get it right. Hallelujah. Go to 34, Genesis 34, verse 3. It talks about why the Levites were caused. Simeon and Levi, Levi were caused. Why? Because of what they did to Shechem. Hallelujah. But this is where I'm going, because I'm going somewhere, brethren. I'm going somewhere, brethren. I'm going somewhere this, this morning. Because I want to tell you that some things does not matter. You know, what did I say? Faithful service. Because, you know, Bible tells us 
in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that called Lord, 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 Lord is actually, does actually mean it. Some of us, we are just here to just probably check the new clothes, check what, probably what pastor is wearing today. Uh, what is he going to say? I know it anyway. As soon as pastor mentioned, I know it anyway. And they go to sleep. Oh. Hallelujah. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah 17 verse 10. It said, God searches all the earth. And our secret motives is known to God. So when I'm talking about giving faithful and sincere sacrifice service to God, get to know what I'm talking about, guys. It's not a joke. What are you doing here? Some of us here, we just like to come in and be, bench, be, 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 uh, warm the bench and go out. <laughs> That's enough. I've been to church today. Box ticked. I was at church today, city of Zion. Oh, it's only for our good. If only we can move closer and serve God with all our heart. What makes it different for these people? Let's go and see in the Bible. What makes it different for these guys? Hallelujah. Let's see the reason. Why they are, you know, they were caused by their father. He limits them in every way. Jacob limits them in every way. Limits Simeon and Levi in every way. But what matters is the level of service. But they have something in their head. They learn from their father. They're still close to God. They're still glued to God. How close are you to God? How does the things of God affect you? Or does it not affect you? Some, some don't even bother. Who cares? Ah, may God have mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus. What did they do? Let's look at what they do. If you, if you, if you, if you look at... Let's go and have a look at it. If you look at Exodus 32, verse 28 there. If you look at that. What did Levi do? Levi was caused. He was caused. So it doesn't matter what your situation is. You are not even caused yet. Even when you are caused, there's a God in heaven who can change the course to blessings. I said there's a God in heaven that can change the courses to blessings. Amen. So, when the issue of calf came up, and the people of Israel demanded a king of their own, and Aaron asked to make them the golden calf. You remember? And as soon as Moses was coming down, they were, they were, they, Moses looked at, at, at what, was, what has just happened, and he threw everything away in anger. And he said, who is on the Lord's side? Guess what? The first people that jumped put there was the Levites. And because they jumped there, they, they just believed Moses straight away. We are on the Lord's side. Brethren, the church is going through something this year. And probably the pastor is asking a way that might not be clear to us. Who is on the Lord's side? Not on the word side. The word will be telling you the impossibility. But God has a different report. How close are you to your God? To see the difference. So what happened? Because these people jump out and say to Moses, we are on the Lord's side, we are ready to go. They are ready to fight. And Moses commanded them what they need to do. If you read that story from 28 more, you will see. And what did they do? Moses asked them to keep, put to sword, everybody that was dancing before the calf. And only the Levites came out and did that. And you would think God had forgotten. God did not forget. Go to Numbers. If you go to Numbers, Numbers 3, 11 to 13. People that have been caused, God changed the cause, causes to bless him. He called Levi, Levi, from now on, you will be my firstborn. Hallelujah. Brethren, there are some things that you will do, service that you will render to God. That you will be impossible for the enemy. That your breakthrough will definitely be certain. Not just breakthrough, not just ordinary. Exceptional breakthrough. 
because of your closeness, of your service, of faithfulness to God, God reward faithfulness. The Bible says, it's the rewarder of those that what? Diligently seek him. Hallelujah. I didn't write that. It's in the Bible. So, no wonder, in Numbers 3, 1 to 3, the story changed. Cause were changed to blessing. As you are sitting down this afternoon, I want you to pray. Daddy, Father, whatever my destiny has been tampered with, because of the reason of the anointing in the house this afternoon, Daddy, restore it. Somebody want to cry to God this afternoon as you are sitting down? Whether you know it or you don't know, somebody somewhere has done something. Say, God, no matter what, wherever my destiny has been tampered with, that I know that I do not know. My father and my God, my purpose in life has been tampered with. Daddy, reform me today. In the name of Jesus, by the reason of your word, you that did it for the Levites, Daddy, they were scattered all over. They were meant to be nothing. You changed their story. You blessed them. You even called them firstborn. They were promoted. Ah, Daddy, let me be promoted. In the name of Jesus. Father, let me be promoted, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Change my story, Lord Almighty. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Even as we go through the last one, amen, you know, if you, if you are serving God, there's no limit to how much, how where God can take you. You know, it might be difficult. There might be some rough patches. Like we all go through the, when we fly aircraft, you know, at times when we run, run into the winds, there are some, you know, patches of uh, discomfort, isn't it? You go down, you go up, the, and the, the captain we want, put on your seatbelt because we are going through some, you know, bad weather. Hallelujah. They just like bad weather sports. It doesn't last forever because God will always reward his servant. Amen. So, Step out this year. Be untouchable. Be outstanding service for God this year. And come and see what God will do. Before they come, be there. You know, a lot of people are talking about this uh, brother that died a few days ago, the barrier. And I told Pastor, uh, you know, I told Pastor, I said, I'm, I'm just surprised. You know, even in London, my, over 200 people joined. Because they were, they were actually giving testimony about what he has done. And I said to pastor, I said, why does God take him now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you will go at your own time in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, we will not die, but we live to what? What? I didn't hear that. That's so muffled. We, we, we will not die, but live to give Glory to the Lord in the what? In the land of the living. Amen. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. As you set yourself out this year, ah, God will use you. He will, he will not dump you. He will promote you. Like he promoted the Levites. He gave them double promotion. Last born become first born. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good start. They are my, he said, Levites are my first born. And since that time, Levi's story changed. They became the priesthood of God. Hallelujah. That's a destiny that has been caused, that God called back to life. And that's why I'm believing for somebody under the sound of my voice this afternoon, that whatever is dead in you, God will call back to life today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I love what Proverbs eleven thirty says. He said, "The fruit of righteous of the righteous is a tree of life, and they and he that uh, winneth soul is what." Can I tell you something? The quickest way to be God's favorite is to start winning soul. Mm. I know it's, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's dumb one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we don't like doing that. We're just gonna go out there. I start giving tracts. I don't. We don't like that, you know. But look, 
The Bible is saying, those are the people that are what? Wise. Serve God. Like if your whole life what? Depends on it. Hallelujah. Finally, pastor has mentioned it. I just mentioned it briefly. Be an incurable giver. Hallelujah. I'm sure we remember something. That's, that's very easy. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6. You can see it there. Solomon did something for God that nobody has done before. What are you thinking about when you read about Solomon? <laughs> Each time I read about Solomon, I'm always praying, God, please, when are you going to make me a treasurer that can break bank and just start building churches? You don't even give to the, your brother that is dying at your side. So you want to give to God. The funniest thing is that, Pastor, God cannot be mocked. He sees. Do you, you hear where, where I read before? He said, all our secret motives, he knows. He knows our feeble frail. Hallelujah. Be an incurable giver. Somebody wants to challenge God this year. God, God, I don't have yet, but I want to have. This, this church project, I want to show you, show the world your glory, what you have done in me. And what, do you know what you are calling for? You are calling for God's challenge. You see, God will say, will say to you, let's see how far you can go. Hallelujah. And when God says, let's see how far you can go, you will break all the bands. So for us, to experience an unusual breakthrough this year, I just thought these are some of the things I think I need to let us know, including myself. Because at the end of the year, my testimony must be special, outstanding. Ah, somebody, somebody wants to say it to himself. My testimony must be special this year. Anybody in the choir, your testimony? My testimony must be special. Hallelujah.